Hello and thank you for joining me for this video. In this video I'm gonna be showing you how to create these vintage waves that you see here using a roll set, a wet set, whatever you want to call it, you're gonna see in a bit. I do have another video on my channel about this topic which is probably the most requested topic uh, in the pinup and vintage community which is how to create vintage waves. So I have another video about it in my channel where I show you how to create it using a curling iron, I mean using hit. In this video I'm gonna be showing you how to achieve it using rolls. So it's what's called a wet set. It means uh, you wet the hair and then slip in uh, with the set. So it doesn't involve any heat so it's less damaging for the hair but it is a technique that can go a bit wrong in a lot of ways so I'm gonna show you in this video how I do it and what works for me after trying out many techniques and I do have different periods in my life where I use different techniques but this is the technique I'm currently using and really works really well for me and is easy to sleep in and easy to create so really I think this is one of the most useful videos I've made so far so I really hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments below so in this technique I'm gonna be showing you how to do a wet set using this foam rollers or sponge rollers whatever you want to call them it's just a sponge and it comes on this uh, plastic bit <laughs> so I'm gonna be rolling my hair on these uh, types of uh, rolls you can find them online for pretty cheap and also you can find different sizes usually the size is related to the color so the pink ones are usually in this size which is I guess about an inch I find them to be the best like they're not too small but also not too big if you use big rolls probably the curl itself won't hold so well so I do recommend using an inch or even smaller if you want an even a more exaggerated a small waves or very curly hair so just so you know but these are kind of uh, the standard the one inch ones so you can actually just wash your hair and roll it and then wait forever for the hair to dry so I don't recommend doing it that way I actually dry my hair completely or even like 95% dry so it's just a tiny bit moist because when it's rolled in these rolls especially depending uh, how thick your hair is and also how long it just takes it uh, to dry mine takes forever to dry so I start off with my hair being dry and also kind of straight if your hair is curly I would suggest using a blow dryer to straighten it a bit just so it's easier actually to roll again and also to have less flyaways so you're gonna see in a bit how I actually uh, roll the hair on the rolls and which sections I take and all of that but let's talk a bit about the product so you can actually just use water if you have a like a spray, sprayer whatever I don't know how to call it but something like this that you can fill in with water it's actually great um, that's a good solution and also that way you can control how much water you use and the hair isn't actually wet but you just uh, kind of um, misting the area that you are currently rolling so that's an option but I actually like to use like a hair setting a uh, this one is called the hair setting potion but just a hair setting spray of some sort this one is called Miss Corlette I got it on the website vintagehairstyling.com where you can find also a lot of uh, different vintage hairstyling uh, uh, equipment and products and because it's a product that is actually uh, based on water but there is some hair product in it uh, it makes the curls be super long lasting I uh, personally have really straight hair to begin with so uh, a lot of things won't hold and using this product actually works great for me so I do recommend it so in terms of what you need for this tutorial so you will need this hair uh, setting uh, spray or anything like it or even water if you don't have anything and you're gonna need some sort of like a medium or stronghold spray this is just a, a local brand so I'm sorry I don't have a recommendation for another uh, international product maybe we're gonna need this uh, set of rolls and also some uh, alligator clips to divide the hair so these are also uh, from vintagehairstyling.com I'm also gonna be using some brushes for the brush out later and a comb for the uh, actually for the back combing and also for um, combing each uh, strand of hair before I roll it on the roll 
Also, we're gonna need some clips to divide the hair and a hairnet for later. I recommend also using a silk scarf because it's very comfortable to sleep in and it covers the rolls and make everything uh, look nicer but also uh, feel a bit uh, more secure and more comfortable to sleep in. So you're probably also asking yourself how long will it take to dry. So usually a night is uh, enough. In this tutorial I did uh, roll my hair at noon the day before and today I brushed it out also at around noon so I had uh, at least 24 hours but usually 12 hours are okay as well it does really really depend on your hair it does depend how you know your hair is about drying like does it dry uh, fast usually like mine doesn't dry fast sometimes uh, it takes at least two days uh, for it to completely dry if I just leave it to dry naturally so that's something to notice and also of course if it's very long and if it's very thick and if you use small strands for each roll or a lot of hair on each roll so it really depends you're gonna have to try and see and also of course it depends on the product to use or if you use water if you took one of the rolls out and you see your hair is still kind of moist you should just take maybe a hair dryer and dry it a bit uh, usually just dry it for like 15 minutes which is very tiring but still if you need to go somewhere that's a good solution you can just dry it with a hair dryer so this is a really nice base to use for a lot of hairstyles but i know the style that i just brushed uh, my hair into is probably the most popular one also it's my favorite one so uh, i'm sure i'm not the only one but you can also use this as a base for victory walls and a lot of other uh, hairstyles it's something that if i know i have something important tomorrow or like a photo shoot or I just want to look nice or whatever i can just do it the night before the more you do it it's gonna be way easier i know probably if you're just watching this technique for the first time and you never tried it it's gonna look like it's so much work but actually I do it at home while watching Netflix and just like even without a mirror I just roll my hair so I promise if you do it enough times you can get to that point where you don't even have to look or concentrate and then the next day you just brush it out and you have a really beautiful hairstyle so I really recommend uh, trying to master this technique okay so here we go for this part of the tutorial, we're gonna need the rolls that we talked about, different clips, a metal tail comb, a hairnet for later, the product we're gonna be using, and also just a regular brush to detangle the hair. I'm starting by making sure my side part is straight, and notice it is a pretty deep side part to get that vintage 1940s inspired hair. Next, I'm using the comb to section the hair, starting from the side part all the way to my ear. I'm twisting that section and putting it up so it's not in my way. We're doing the same for the other side. Use as many clips as you need to make sure this section of hair is not in your way, as we're gonna be starting to roll the hair from the back of the head, starting from the bottom towards the top. And only then we're gonna do the front section. Take a sip of coffee, you're gonna need it because the work starts now. I'm starting by parting the hair to create a row at the bottom of the hair where I'm gonna be starting. This row is gonna be divided into two sections in this case, but this really depends on how much hair you have and how long it is. Yeah, this is a good time to also tell you that you should prepare the rolls in advance, open them and line them up in front of you so it's easier to work. Now that I have a section that I want to start rolling, I grab the product and spray it as evenly as I can throughout the strand of hair paying special attention to the ends and then combing it thoroughly to continue spreading the product and to also make sure the hair is rolled when it's completely smooth and tidy. I place the roll under the strand of hair about mid length and start rolling the ends on it. You should always make sure the ends are tucked in perfectly because that's something that will be very noticeable once you brush out the hair later. You can use the metal tail of the comb to tuck them in and make sure they are rolled and not just squashed in there. To continue, just take the roll and keep rolling it all the way to the roots of the hair. Use the roll closure to secure it in place. Next, I'm rolling another roll from that same row. Make sure to not grab sections that are too much hair for one roll as it won't hold as well and also it might be harder to roll 
it will take longer to dry and the closure of the roller might leave a more prominent mark if the amount of hair is too much. I'm starting a new section by parting the hair from ear to ear. This row is gonna be divided into three strands of hair for three rolls as it is wider than the first section we did. So again, wet the hair with product, comb it thoroughly, place the roll beneath the hair, roll the ends around it and then roll the roller all the way towards the roots. Try to have the roll sit pretty much on top of its own uh, section of hair in the roots. I see a lot of tutorials where they start rolling from the front or from the top down. That's an option as well, of course, but I find this way where you start from the bottom up to be more organized and ultimately easier as the rolls you already rolled are not in your way as you keep rolling towards the top. The next row is just one or two inches above the last row. Here's a little peek on how it looks so far from the back. It doesn't have to look uh, amazing or be completely geometrical. It just needs to be organized enough so that you can easily open new sections in your roots without um, coming across any hair that shouldn't be there. So as you can see, I'm not doing this using a back mirror. So I'm more kind of uh, feeling with my fingers if the row I sectioned is more or less straight and I divide the hair into the strands of hair for the rolls by just making sure the strands are more or less the same in volume throughout the whole head. Once you wet and comb the hair, make sure the ends are completely wet because that's one of the most important areas in the roll and also it will be just way harder to roll if not. You can repeat the product application and spraying until you feel there is enough and usually you will need to do another round just to make sure the ends are wet enough. Don't forget the closure of the roll can be adjusted so you can close the roll as close to the roots as comfortably possible. So I hope you got the hang of this by now so I'm speeding up the video a bit because it's already an extremely long tutorial. I didn't want to take any of the process out uh, so you can really see me doing the whole hair and make sure you understand uh, where each roll is going. So I hope this is not too long but on the other hand I think you can really learn from this tutorial how to do this properly. I'm just sectioning the back of my hair into higher and higher horizontal rows and sectioning those into rolls. Every once in a while I need to stop to prepare more rolls so once uh, the hair is already wet with the product I only need to grab a roll and roll it. All the rolls that are in this section which is the back of my hair are facing down and also they are in a 90 degree angle to my scalp. This is why when I get to the top area of my head I need to comb the hair up and then roll it so the section after rolling it will be rolled on top of its own uh, group of roots. This way I make sure there is plenty of volume when I brush out the hair later and the hair isn't uh, glued to my scalp. Also it's way more comfortable to sleep with if you sleep with the rolls when they are actually rolled around your head. Make sure also not to roll them too tightly, that might be uncomfortable and also it might actually make the hair a bit less tidy later. When you get to the crown area of the head, you will usually need to part the hair just into sections that fit your roll size and you will be left at the end with a kind of triangle section as the last roll. 
that's actually what we're aiming towards because we don't want the crown of the head to be parted in a middle part or anything weird like that. Now we reach the rolling of the front of the hair. Let's start from the side. I'm creating two parts that can be described as being uh, on top of the arches of the eyebrows. I'm starting from the side that is actually gonna be covered with lots of hair because uh, the side part is on the other side. In this area, because I do wanna make sure it's not flat and doesn't have a mark from the closure of the roll, I sometimes use a bobby pin or a clip to hold the roll in place and I only use the spongy part of the roll, as you can see. On this side, I have less hair for some reason, and anyway, it's not gonna be very visible, so I usually just put all of it in one roll. If you feel like you have more hair, of course, do as many rolls as you need to. On the other side, I have a bit more hair, so the rolling pattern uh, in this side is gonna be different. I'm creating two rolls, you can choose whichever one you prefer, um, like what I did on my left side or my right side, according to the amount of hair you have. Also, I didn't mention something very important that really you can notice here is that I have uh, cut my hair into a horseshoe cut. This haircut is ideal for this kind of hairstyle, so that's why the front is much shorter than the back. It doesn't make a lot of sense when it's straight, but when you style the hair in this uh, vintage style, it looks way better when you have your hair cut like that. I have to admit I filmed a tutorial of cutting my own hair like this during the third lockdown uh, we had last December, but for some reason it's the one video I never got around to editing, so if you're curious to see it, let me know in the comments below. On to the last section, the top, front, middle part. I will be rolling it in a pretty random looking pattern because I'm actively trying to avoid having any partings here that are gonna be problematic later. So I'm trying to take random and almost triangle shaped sections and rolling them. So here as well, I'm rolling the hair towards the back or towards the floor, depending how you look at it. I'm starting from the back and in this area I don't mind having the plastic closure possibly uh, leaving a mark because it's kind of in the back. When I get to the front rolls and the ones that are closer to the parting I will use the clips again as I showed on the sides. I'm rolling the last front rolls in a diagonal angle, again to avoid creating clear partings in the hair. The rolling is finally over, you can give now a little extra mist at the end of the product or of the water. This spray bottle isn't very misty, so it's not that great for it, but with other bottles I usually give a good spraying at the end. Cover all of this with a hairnet to help hold everything together and make it more comfortable to sleep in or spend the next few hours in. I don't like to bring the hairnet all the way to the front of the face, that way it doesn't leave a mark around the frame of the face. Next, I'm gonna be wrapping all of this in a silk scarf because I need to leave the house, but also because it makes it way more comfortable to sleep in. My trick actually is to wrap a few scarves before I go to bed because I'm a bit sensitive when it comes to my scalp and Alonzo's nickname for me when I do this is cauliflower head, which sounds way more funny in Hebrew, but anyway, it makes it more pillowy and comfortable to sleep in. So as I said, I filmed the first part the day before and this is the next day where I start by taking out the walls. 
you can see here I take them out by just kind of unrolling them so I do it gently I don't want to pull the hair or ruin the curls or anything like that and the first one that you take out you always need to make sure that it's completely dry so just take it out feel in your hand if it feels completely dry or even a, a bit crunchy if you're using a product so only when you're sure it's a hundred percent dry only then you can take out all of the rolls if not i would leave it in or use a hairdryer or anything like that to make sure uh, it dries completely because if not this hairstyle is simply not gonna work you're gonna brush your hair and it's gonna be straight or curly or whatever your natural hair is at this point you should have pretty ridiculous short curls you can loosen them up a bit with your fingers before brushing if you'd like or if the product is being a bit stubborn. I'm grabbing a brush that I like to use for a brush out. Each different brush or comb you use for this stage might give a different result and also each time you do it, it will come out a bit different anyway so don't be afraid to experiment with different brushes and combs for the brush out part. I'm starting to work my way up from the bottom of the hair working in sections. I'm using my hand for contrast to brush the hair and notice how I guide the ends of the hair into a wave using my hand. When the product is still stiff, I'm being a bit more aggressive with the brushing because I need to brush all of it out into being kind of regular hair again. But if you did this right, the wave will still be there. But on the other hand, you can't really brush forever and aggressively because the waves will become smoother and smoother and might become too straight at some point. Here you can really see the hairstyle starting to come together. I'm now starting to brush the other side, starting again from the bottom up. You can see here the clips I put in left a mark on the hair. I fixed it a bit by using a blow dryer, protecting the rest of the hair and only hitting the problematic area. But it was actually in an area that is behind the ear, so it didn't need too much attention, but just remember this tip if you encounter that situation. I don't often use a back mirror, so usually I style the two sides and then brush the back to connect them together. I'm just being honest and admitting I usually don't really care too much how the back looks. As long as I feel pretty from the front, I don't care what other people see. But recently I was teaching a live broadcasted makeup class and I knew the back of my head is gonna be featured a lot. So I just placed a full body mirror behind me and put most of the brushing out effort into the back of the hair. But most times I will brush it out as you can see in this video by putting most of the effort into the sides and then just connecting them together. We are now brushing the last section that is left which is the top section. This one is actually the most important one and it really sets the tone for the entire look so I don't really set anything with hairspray until I reach this section. To start just brush it out as we did so far. You can see it's already pretty cute like this and it can be flattering to a lot of people but for me I feel like volume is a must. So I grab my comb and I take small sections starting from the parting of the hair and I back comb them. Each row that is back combed is facing the opposite side from where it's actually gonna be going. So I also fluff it out a bit and spread the back combing. After I'm done, I fold the hair back to its place and start kind of cleaning it a bit using a brush. I'm just brushing the outside layer of the back combing. 
There are a million ways to style this section and you need to figure out what works best for you and what is flattering for your face and for your hair. But here's how I like to do it. So I brush out the part that is on top of the forehead towards the top and then kind of brush um, the area that is next to the parting towards the side. I then start kind of to make sure the rest of the length of the hair that is beneath this area is kind of wavy and working out for me before uh, I continue perfecting the top part. At this point I feel more comfortable to start setting the hair. This helps me set the volume in place so I can keep brushing the length of it in a minute. I'm using medium strength hairspray and being careful not to use too much at once as I'm still in the styling process. Every time you spray the hair with hairspray, use the opportunity to perfect the hairstyle using a brush or a comb gently while the hairspray is still wet. I like to use a hairdryer to set hairspray and in this case help me set the volume by blowing air on the area that is on top of my forehead. To get that Jessica Rabbit style wave next to your eye, because unlike a cartoon we actually need that eye for scene, so we're gonna do it next to the eye and not over the eye, I'm gonna be folding the hair and kind of uh, finding the wave. You can use some clips to hold things in place as you work, but be careful with them because they can take down some of the volume if used incorrectly and also leave a mark when the hairspray dries. You can see here it's not too late to lift the volume up a bit and then using the clips and the hairspray I'm gonna be setting that volume to be high again. Now I'm back to working on the length of the hair. It was actually looking really nice but I'm aiming towards a more smooth and sculpted style so I'm brushing this section and trying to find the wave. I like to have a little roll in this area uh, to end kind of uh, the ends of the hair but it's definitely not a must. By the way you can really see here the difference my haircut makes. If it wasn't cut in a horseshoe shape it wouldn't have been able to be styled in this shape using this technique. So haircut is really important. Now I'm setting and styling as I go. This takes a lot of practice and patience as you're just kind of setting and then perfecting. Setting and perfecting, doing it in steps, not in one go. That way you can keep changing it as you need to change it and it's not already set uh, when you still have some stuff to perfect. The metal tail of the comb comes in really handy, as you can see here, I'm using it to really perfect all the small details and set everything in place. Sorry about the grumpy faces, this is how I react to breathing hairspray. You can use a bobby pin just to hide inside the hair to help it stay in place. It's not really holding it, but it's just helping it stay in place. So just some more final touches on this side. On the other side, I like the hair to be behind my ear. You can even use a pomade if you like it to be super smooth and slick. I'm doing some final brushing on this side as well and then using hairspray to set it. You can see here I'm using the back of my hand or my thumb to hold the ends of the hair into a curl. I'm also making sure the wave is smooth and cohesive. You can hide a bobby pin here as well behind your ear 
to have the hair stay there. Now that I'm happy with the front on both sides, I'm just doing some brushing at the back of the hair to make sure it looks kinda decent. I brush it and also fold the ends in uh, beneath the hair. If you manage to teach your spouse how to do this for you, you really made it in life. Alonzo used to do it for me sometimes when I had something important, which I didn't for a long time because 2020 and 2021. But actually it's a really cool idea for a tutorial, so I might have to think about it. And voila, the hairstyle is done. So this is the finished look. I really hope you like it and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you find it useful and that you try this at home and let me know in the comments below how it goes. This is a really useful technique. I use it all the time so I really hope you like it. Also if you're wondering about my perfect red lips this is actually my own product. It's called The Perfect Red. Uh, it's this liquid red lipstick that you can see here and also there is this brush. This is a lip brush that is retractable and double-sided. You can find uh, videos about it in my channel. So just letting you know these are in stock right now at least in the time of filming this video. So if you want to get it and get this perfect red lips um, follow the link in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching and see you on my next video. Kisses!